For many people, traveling can also be an art form, or at the very least, it can be the basis of some truly evocative artwork. Damon Kowarski is a young Australian printmaker who has chronicled his many travels in a recent exhibition. Damon Kowarski graduated with a BFA Honours in Printmaking from the Victorian College of Art in Melbourne and is currently an artist in residence and visiting faculty at a university in Lahore. Since graduating, he has exhibited regularly in Australia and internationally and has worked as an archaeological, courtroom and scientific illustrator. In late 2005, Damon travelled through Yemen, Djibouti and Ethiopia. The unique and distinctive culture of the region and the colours of mud and stone inspired much of the work made in the following years. His exhibition of prints titled Home and Away, which opened recently at the Alhambra Art Gallery, chronicles his travels. And we have the artist here in the studio with us today. Damon, welcome to Articulation. Thank you very much. So what is a nice Australian boy doing here in Pakistan and Yemen and Egypt and Ethiopia and God knows where else? I get asked that question a lot <laughs> and I'm not actually a spy but a travelling artist so I go to all these countries and draw and get ideas and then take those ideas back to Australia and work in my studio on them. So as well as all the other things it's a huge research trip. Okay, and coming to the exhibition, uh, it's called Home in a Way, which you told me earlier is the name of an Australian soap opera, which I've seen, by the way. Right, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's actually probably more famous in England than Australia, okay. um, but it seemed an appropriate title and also mm. one that was a bit playful. And uh, the works that you have on display, uh, do you do them during your travels or do you go back to Australia or? wherever you can find the space. Yeah. No, I always, when you travel, you've got quite heavy limitations mm -hmm. on what you can carry with you. So I take just drawing books and pens and pencils and I do the drawings out in the field and then take them back to the studio in Australia to work there. Because with printmaking, you need presses mm -hmm. and chemicals, things that are not easy to put in your backpack. Um, so then why printmaking? Actually, that would be my next That's question. That's a good question. I studied at university. Mm -hmm. I never considered myself to be a painter. And this was a, a different art form that I, I enjoyed. It's also, a, in a way, a very democratic art form because you, you make 10 or 12 or 20 copies of, of a particular piece. So many people can share it, whereas often with a painting, you produce one and that's kind of the end mm -hmm. of the story. Um, and I've, I've really fallen in love with the technique and the materials and the kind of things you can produce from it. And the works that uh, I went and saw the exhibition uh, two days ago, and they have this very strange kind of haunting quality. They've, I don't know if, if you meant for this to happen, but they have give off this sense of loneliness somehow, uh, because you don't see people you see landscape or you see buildings and you see the lone kind of figure who's either the observer or I guess, I don't know, I won't say you because that huh. would be a bit presumptuous, but... My hair is longer. <laughs> um, there is something of that, that feeling when mm. you travel of being an observer. It's also structurally that if you put 10 people in a picture, it's like juggling 10 balls and it's very complicated. Mm. Whereas if you have one or two people, it's easier to control the elements. I mean, I, I have this idea that I'd like to do a crowd scene, hmm. but that's something I'm working towards because simply to pile a whole heap of people together without understanding the relationships mm -hmm. between them is actually very complicated. Uh, one more thing that uh, immediately struck me, well, once you go through the entire exhibition, um, you know, you have these cityscapes and you have the buildings, but you can't really pinpoint and say, if you don't like the titles, okay, this is this country or this city. Hmm. It's all kind of, uh, it's very similar. It's very familiar. 
I yeah. think somebody pointed out in the paper as well that it's, it's, it looks like the walled city from Lahore. Yes, people said that and they were saying that particularly about uh, prints that were of Mexico City, which is architecturally, socially completely different from Lahore. But it's that sense of the city as an organic place, which you definitely get in the old city. You have a pile up of architecture and pipes and humans. Um, I'm, I like cities, but I'm interested in them as a place where people live, not the kind of stark and lonely and quite hostile place that modern cities can be. I actually brought up miniature painting earlier for a reason. Yes. You're learning uh, how to do that now. Yes, I'm, I'm studying it at Beacon House University. Okay. Um, that was part of the reason I came here. Um, it had been something I was, I'd been interested in for some time and it seemed a really good opportunity to come and actually learn. Uh, how are you familiar with that format? Uh, uh, a few ways. I was in Pakistan <coughs> 10 years ago when I was an art student and at that time I met the Pakistani artist Nusra Latif Qureshi mm -hmm. who now lives in Melbourne and also our museum in Victoria has a very very good collection of Rajput paintings and I was able to go and look at their collection uh, did that quite a lot in 2004 and 2005 I mean as you'd know miniature is a phenomenally strong tradition mm. and it has a very distinctive character that's perhaps not available or not really available anywhere else in the world and it's a living tradition as well which is very exciting. And who, who is your teacher? Who's your uh, staff? I have two teachers, uh, Mahrin Zuberi mm -hmm. who, and Murad Mumtaz. They both studied at the NCA. I also dabbled in it briefly when I was huh? a student. I actually found it very therapeutic. Uh, just being so close to the surface. Did you find anything? Yeah, like I mean, that? it's it's, a, it's not something you do in a hurry, mm. and it's not something you do when there are a lot of distractions. Yeah. And in a way, it's similar to printmaking because it's very contained. Uh, you have to approach it in a rather systematic way. Mm -hmm. There's not a huge amount of room for gesture and um, flinging paint around. It's mm. sober. It's contemplative. Yeah and it's narrative and they're all things that I, I like. And have you had a chance to really look at the art scene in, in Pakistan, uh, see what's going on? Any, any particular artist that you like or whose work you admire so far? Yeah, well I was lucky enough to go up to see the exhibition at the National Gallery in Islamabad mm -hmm. just before it closed and there was of course a huge range of painting and sculpture. I was very taken by Ali Qasim's work um, he's in London at the moment, but I'm hoping to meet him when he comes back. But um, again, there's, he comes partly from a miniature tradition, but it's different and extended and then working very firmly in a narrative mode. So that was very exciting, as well as, of course, the galleries full of miniatures that they mm -hmm. had both in Islamabad and also at the museum here. And you've also been teaching here. Yes. What ex what has that experience been like? That's been really interesting. It's mm -hmm. the foundation year, so it's taking uh, students, some of whom have had years of practice or years of experience drawing, and then others who are obviously creative but don't have the technical skills, and nurturing both those kinds of people. So some people have a lot of things to say but don't yet, or are developing the techniques. Other people have a more firm understanding of how to do things but then have other areas where they can definitely grow. Uh, do you find that, uh, I mean, first of all, have you taught in Australia? I've taken specialised workshops mm -hmm. in things like book binding, um, printmaking to small groups and, but I haven't taught large scale classroom work until now. Mm -hmm. And do you find that there is a, a difference between how students, I guess, learn or create or question over here and people back home? That's a bit difficult because the, the classes I took in Australia were specialised workshops that people had particularly mm -hmm. chosen to do, which means you're getting people who are very interested in, in that thing. Mm -hmm. um, drawing is sometimes regarded as slightly a poor cousin uh, boot camp might be a, an appropriate term. So it's, it's, it was about finding ways to get the kids really enthusiastic about what is 
the absolute foundation of all art, whether whether you go on to make any other form, drawing is always at the basis or at the bottom of it all. Well, I hope your the rest of your stay in Pakistan is as interesting as it has been so far and wishing you a lot more traveling. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Damon, for being on the show today. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a short break. See you in a bit.